Man spotted in wee hours pulling at door handles at Brownwood Popular Restaurant. Villager claims his wife is insane. Will PWAC approve a 40% rate hike to take care of our ponds? A New Yorker was nabbed at Walmart after sneaking his elderly mother out of an assisted living. Officials are poised to forgive $22,700 in deed compliance fines in the villages. A speeding Mexican driver admits he knew he should not be behind the wheel. How many golf cart crashes did we have this week in the villages? Florida leads the nation in income migration. Villager jailed after battle with woman over homosexual content on the television. A villa near La Hacienda Recreation Center sells for $610,000. 74-year-old accused of pulling a gun on a caregiver who refused to engage with sex. She's back again. Villager jailed without bond in third arrest tied with feud with neighbor. Teens living in the village of Finney arrested after botched attempt to steal groceries. Speeding driver from Guatemala arrested near Spring Arbor Village. A member of the Morse family lands in jail after caught behind the wheel of Tesla. How many holes in one do you think we got this week in the villages? This and more coming up. Community watch officers was on patrol at 2.20 a.m. Saturday when he spotted a man later identified as 28-year-old Zachary Taylor pulling out on the door handle at the Harvest Restaurant. Wildwood police officers soon responded to the scene and conducted a pat-down of Zachary. He was found to be in possession of methamphetamine. Zachary was arrested on a felony charge of drug possession. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $2,000 bond. A villager has claimed his wife is insane. She bloodied his face during an altercation at their home. Jennifer Jean Percello, 58, was arrested at about noon Saturday on a felony charge of battery at a residence in the Long Leaf Villas in the village of Finney. When officer arrived at the couple's home, they found that Percello's 72-year-old husband had fresh blood on the bridge of his nose and blood also stained his shirt. The husband said his wife had kicked him, punched him, hit him with a wooden table. <laughs> <laughs> An officer noted two legs had been broken off the table. The husband said that if he hadn't called the police, his wife would still be hitting him. Percello claimed her husband had been drinking and was verbally abusive, calling her a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> There's worse names to be called. <laughs> She admitted she was mad and backhanded him in the face. The native of New York also said she climbed on top of her husband of 25 years and landed a couple of good close fist punches. <laughs> good Lord. The officer who wrote in the arrest report noted that Percello had a large ring on her right hand and the nature of her husband's injury seemed to indicate the ring had been used to inflict his injuries. She was taken into custody and booked at the Sumter County Detention Center. She was released after posting a $1,000 bond. Our only comment to this would be to the to the man that got the <laughs> knocked out of him. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> the project-wide advisory committee has rejected an amended contract calling for a 40% increase in the cost of treatment of ponds located south of County Road 466. Good. These people around here is getting greedy. Last month, PWAC members blocked at the $247,783 increase sought in the existing contract with Solitude Lake Management, LLC. The in increase would have raised the price of the work to $825,948. In a letter, Solitude explained that there have been challenges treating the ponds south of State Road 44 in the villages. Those comments have left many wondering if the rest of the villages, including community development districts north of County Road 466, are subsidizing the developers' ponds. 
That point was raised by the chairman of the Community Development District 1 board and Community Development District 4 supervisors refused to approve the increase of solitude. PWAC members on Monday were in no mood to absorb the huge increase. PWAC member Steve Bova of Community Development District 10 supervisors was outspoken on the issue. Good, Steve. I'm glad you did. The last supervisor we had, he didn't do shit. Mm -hmm. We were just going to roll over and take a 40% increase, he asked. He made a motion to reject the contract. He pointed out that the pond south of State Road 44 seemed to be the source of the increase. It's south of 44, not north of 44. We are not having those issues north of 44. Why should we pay an extra $15 per acre for ponds that are not impacted? I cannot go back to my board and my residence every year and ask for an increase. The committee agreed to rebid the contract. District staffers warned that there aren't many companies with the staff, equipment, and expertise to treat the 750 ponds in the villages. Staffers said the available bidders are not plentiful. Then go outside the state and get them. This isn't rocket science around here. A New Yorker was nabbed at Walmart after sneaking his elderly mother out of an assisted living facility. Witnesses described quite a commotion Sunday afternoon at the Walmart at Buffalo Ridge Plaza in the villages after 56-year-old James Lawrence Sicard of Astoria, New York, directed law enforcement to his mother, who was lying on a piece of foam in the back of a silver Honda Odyssey minivan with New Mexico license plates, according to the rest report. Sicard was acting erratic and not making much sense. Sicard, who works as props in the entertainment industry and whose television credits include The Equalizer, The Gilded Age, and The Good Fight, had summoned law enforcement to the Walmart and indicated he would meet them at the rear of the garden section. When a deputy arrived on the scene, Sicard indicated he feared getting in trouble. Sicard's mother, a former TWA hostess, ooh, TWA, that takes you back, appeared to be confused and the village's public safety department was summoned to the scene. She did not realize she was in Florida. She thought she was in Massachusetts. She was in need of medical care and was taken from the scene by an ambulance. Deputies learned that Sicard snatched his mother from the Oak Manor Assisted Living Facility in Largo, sneaking her mother out through a kitchen door. The assisted living staff informed deputies that Sicard's mother is dependent on numerous medications and had missed necessary dosages since being removed from the facility by her son. Deputies noted that none of the woman's medications were found in the minivan. Sicard's father died in 2006 after 48 years of marriage to his mother. The elder Sicard passed away in a nursing home in Massachusetts. Sicard, who notes in his professional biography that he attended the University of Florida and was arrested on felony charges of neglect of an elderly person and interfering with custody. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center on a $1,500 bond. You got to wonder about some people. A 63-year-old Village of Chatham woman with multiple drunk driving convictions has secured her freedom after the prosecutor's office opted not to pursue prosecutions in a battery case. Donna Frances Hansen had been arrested June 20 at her home after a man who had been napping called 911 and reported that Hansen had punched him. But we got some violent women around here. The man described Hanson as drunk and angry. A Marion County Sheriff's deputy found Hanson in the garage and tried to get her side of the story. She began reciting lyrics to a song by the singer Pink. <laughs> At the time of the battery arrest, Hanson was free on a $10,000 bond in connection with a 2022 golf cart drunk driving arrest. After the battery arrest, the prosecutor's office filed a motion seeking the revocation of Hanson's $10,000 bond in the DUI arrest, citing a special condition of her bond had been that she not consume alcohol. However, the prosecutor's office in June 29 decided not to pursue the battery charge because the man she allegedly attacked expressed his desire not to see her prosecuted. The attorney representing Hansen immediately filed a motion reinstating her bond from the 2022 golf cart DUI arrest. Prior to the 2022 drunk driving arrest, Hansen already had six, count them, six convictions for driving under the influence, including convictions in Broward, Volusia, and Palm Beach counties. How many? I ask you, how many times do you arrest somebody for the same thing? Officials are poised to forgive $22,700 in deed compliance fines at homes in the villages. The Village Center Community Development District Board of Supervisors will consider the fine forgiveness when it meets at 3.30 p.m. Wednesday at Savannah Center. The forgiveness of fines would involve five properties. 
A home at 829 Silver Oak Avenue on a historic side of the villages has $6,750 in outstanding fines. Former State Representative Marlene O'Toole had been named the executor of the estate by the owner who passed away in 2012. The utilities were shut off, the grass was overgrown, and O'Toole noted the property was not fully in her name, and she decided on letting the property go according to community standards. The house was sold on March 28, 2023. A home at 721 Jason Drive in the village of Silver Lake has $3,500 in outstanding fines. It has been sold twice, once in 2021, and again in 2022. A home at 1221 Pompano Lane has $1,750 in unpaid fines. It has been sold twice this year. A deceased couple left behind a home at 909 Orchid Street on the historic side of the villages while out of compliance, $8,500 in fines piled up. It was sold in 2022. The owner of a home at 1013 Vermont Avenue on the historic side of the villages was summoned to public hearings but was a no-show in 2021 and again in 2022. The forgiveness of $2,200 in fines is being sought. This can be a problem here when people pass away or reverse mortgages and they just let them go. A man from Mexico who was caught speeding admitted he knew he should not be behind the wheel. Luis Angel Martinez Arlano, 25, of Orlando, was at the wheel of a blue Chevy Camaro at about 6.30 p.m. Wednesday when he was driving 60 miles per hour in a 45-mile-an-hour zone on County Road 476 in Bushnell. During a traffic stop, he handed a deputy his Mexican passport and admitted he did not have a valid driver's license. Arlano said he knew he shouldn't be driving, but he only drove due to work. He was arrested on a charge of no valid driver's license and booked at the Septa County Detention Center. He was released after posting a $1,000 bond. I hope they towed his car. A villager has been arrested on a drunk driving charge in connection with a golf cart crash that sent his injured passenger to an area hospital. Mark James Dion, 63 of the village of St. James, St. James is a brand new neighborhood, had been driving a white Yamaha golf cart at about 9 p.m. on the 4th of July when he crashed into the hedges at Pinellas Place at Buena Vista Boulevard, according to the rest report from the Florida Highway Patrol. Dion's clothes were very disheveled and bloody. He was sweating and had urine and fecal matter on the backside of his shorts. Good Lord. How drunk do you have to be? I'm a passenger in the golf cart was transported to UF Health Leesburg Hospital. Dion, who purchased his home in the villages in 2022, struggled through field sobriety exercises. He provided breast samples that registered 0.155 and 0.153 blood alcohol content. He was arrested on a charge of driving under the influence and booked at the Septa County Detention Center. He was released after posting a $1,000 bond. New income migration figures have been released showing that Florida maintains its number one spot in leading the nation in net income migration, gaining $39.2 billion over the year. This breaks down to $4.48 million per hour in new net income to Florida. This new figure is an increase of 65.1% from the previous year. The Florida Chamber of Commerce, which released the figures, held it as a promising trend that as we work to achieve the Florida 2030 blue print mission in making Florida a top 10 global economy by 2030 and ensuring our brand and reputation as the best place to live, work, raise a family, visit, learn, play, relocate, and compete remains top in the nation. Influx of income is primarily concentrated at Miami-Dade, Palm Beach, and Collier Counties, according to the Chamber of Commerce. Texas is in a distant second place coming in at $10.9 billion. You got to ask yourself, why is everybody all of a sudden from a lot of different states moving to Texas and Florida? I think we all know the answer to that. One of the number one states that people are moving out of is New York. You see it on the news every week, literally every week. Second state would be California. Just saying. A villager was jailed after a battle with a woman over homosexual content she was watching on television. <laughs> <laughs> James Edward Barr, 62, was arrested on a charge of battery Thursday night at his home in the village of Pennycamp. Pennycamp's a nice area. 
It's pretty well located, too. The Decatur, Illinois native had his hands in the air when he walked out of his home upon the arrival at about 8 p.m. of Sumter County Sheriff's deputies. He appeared to be intoxicated. He said he had been in a verbal altercation with a woman while watching television. The nature of Barr's relationship to the woman was redacted from the arrest report. Hmm, I wonder why. The deputy told deputies Barr had been drinking and got upset over a homosexual comment on a show she was watching, according to the arrest report. I'm not having that in my house, he said. The woman attempted to get out of the recliner, but the 280-pound pushed her back into the chair and held her down. She suffered torn skin on her forearm. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center, where he was initially held without bond. And you can't blame her for what was said on TV. A village was arrested on a drunk driving charge after overturning his golf cart at the gate at the entrance to the village of Bel Air. A woman driving to the village of Bel Air noticed the overturned Yamaha golf cart at about 9.30 p.m. The squares stop at 9 o'clock, and he grabs his hot golf cart, and he's on his way home at 9.30. Thursday, according to an arrest report from the Sumter County Sheriff's Office, the driver of the golf cart, later identified as 62-year-old James Mark Snuggs of the Birchbrook Villas, was still in the driver's seat, held in by his seatbelt. <laughs> he couldn't get out. <laughs> He was finally able to unbuckle himself and climb out of the golf cart. Two unidentified men came upon the scene, and they were able to upright the golf cart before the first responders arrived on the scene. The village's public safety department arrived and performed medical evaluation, but Snugs declined treatment. He just wanted to go home before the cops got there. It appeared the North Carolina native was impaired, and a deputy invited him to participate in field sobriety exercises. He refused and was placed under arrest on a charge of driving under the influence. He also refused to provide breath samples. Prior to towing, an inventory of the golf cart turned up a cooler which contained four unopened Miller Lite beer bottles and two bottles of water. He was booked at Subject County Detention Center and released after posting a $1,000 bond. Golf carts have the same rule of thumb, just like cars when transporting alcoholic beverages. The alcohol cannot be within the driver of the vehicle's reach. That's why the cooler on the golf cart is back there. A villa near La Hacienda Recreation Center has been sold for $610,000. The sale of the home at 1265 Vista Lago Place in the Vista Lago Villas was finalized Wednesday. The 2,088-square-foot home has three bedrooms and three bathrooms. One of the key selling features was a short walk to Spanish Springs Town Square. The kitchen features stainless steel appliances, granite countertops, and a center island. We looked at them years ago when Spanish Springs was the only square. These are great places. It's the way they're built. They have a tile type a roof. They're built to last like forever. Inside, they're usually like townhouses or two story. There's usually a stairway in there. So there's extra fees that go with these homes, though, because you don't do anything there. You don't bow grass. You don't trim bushes or any of that stuff. So there's an extra monthly fee. And I, at that time, I looked at them and I'm going back in the 80s. It was $25 a month extra on top of every other fee you got to pay, like everybody else does, uh, because they maintain that area. I don't know what it is now, but if you ever look at one of these for sale, you're going to be lucky because they very seldom ever come up for sale in public. Mostly foreign people own them. When I was looking at them, it was usually German people. And so when they got ready to sell one, they sold them to somebody they knew in Germany and the deal was done and it was never done in public here. And so when one came up for sale in public, it was very rare. And I don't know if that's still true today, but I got a feeling it might be. Thanks, Shane Joe. A golf cart was hit by a car near the ninth hole of the Mangrove Executive Golf Course. A golf cart at about 12.45 p.m. Thursday had departed from the ninth hole and was crossing Hendry Drive when the crash occurred, according to witnesses. The 83-year-old man driving the Yamaha golf cart was a resident of the village of Sunset Point, according to the accident report. He had failed to yield to a black 2021 Hyundai Tucson utility vehicle driven by 71-year-old village of Dunedin woman. The man was knocked from a golf cart, which overturned upon impact. He was taken by ambulance to Ocala Regional Medical Center. Most of these accidents that might involve head trauma or anything like that, you have to go to Ocala because that is the trauma center. The Villages does not have a trauma center yet. And so that's where you go. 
Well, here's our old friend. She's back. A 78-year-old villager has been jailed without bond after her third arrest tied to a feud with her neighbor. Janice Francis McKee of the village of Hacienda East was booked Thursday afternoon at the Sumter County Detention Center. She was arrested June 8th after allegedly trimming her neighbor's tree in what appears to be a long-running dispute. She had been free on a $2,000 bond when she was arrested a second time on June 23rd when she drove her golf cart in the neighbor's lawn and proceeded to hit her neighbor with a stick. <laughs> uh, according to the arrest report, the second arrest is being considered a violation of her bond from the first arrest. Last week, the prosecutor's office filed a motion calling for a revocation of her bond from the first arrest. McKee, who lives at 1301 Fontana Court, has property that backs up to the residence of 89-year-old William Calabrese at 1302 Corona Avenue. I'm not going to read all this. Those of you that follow me on news all the time, you know the story. But those of you that are new to this, if this story interests you, go back last week, and there's, I think, arrest number two. Go back three weeks ago, arrest number one happens, and it'll put it all together for you. A 74-year-old man is accused of pulling a gun on a caregiver who refused to engage in sex. Harold Potter Donald Jr. was arrested at about 4 a.m. Thursday on charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and simple battery at his home at 222 Skyline Drive in Lady Lake. The woman was cooking when she was approached by Donald, who was angry due to her refusal to engage in sexual activities. He grabbed a skillet off the stove and threw it into the sink. The woman ran into the bedroom, locked the door, and used her weight of her body to lean against the door to ensure that Donna was not able to force his way in. The woman's two children were in the bedroom and were frightened when O'Donnell began banging on the door. The woman opened the door in an attempt to calm down O'Donnell. The Connecticut native pointed a handgun at her head. A 911 call was placed to help. A Lake County Sheriff's Office negotiating team arrived on the scene, surrounded the residence, and made contact with Donald. He had additional weapons and barricaded himself in the home. That bitch needs to leave, he told Tim, before coming uncooperative and disconnecting the call. I'm sorry, I'm just reading it. Donald eventually walked out of the home and was taken into custody. He declined to say much, but admitted he had a gun in his hand during the confrontation. He was taken into custody and booked at the Lake County Jail on a $31,000 bond. I read that. I know it's not the villages. Lady Lake is just outside the villages. Part of the villages is actually in Lake County because our streets are open to the public. Our squares, our restaurants, all everything here is open to the public. This guy can be sitting next to you at a square. You don't know. It's just food for thought. Do you expect stuff like this around a retirement community? I sure don't. David Doddle of the Village of Alhambra scored his fifth hole-in-one on Monday, on July 3rd, on the 17th hole at the Southern Oaks Golf Course. He got the lucky ace, 122 yards, using a 9-iron. You lucky dog, you. Congratulations, Dave, on your hole-in-one. Beer's on you. Two teens living in the village of Finney were arrested after a botched attempt to steal groceries. Shavonda Violet Bender, 18, and Izion G. Juan Ray Aaron, 19, who both list an address at 1792 Champ Street in the Chase Villas in the village of Finney, went through the self-checkout lane Saturday afternoon and failed to pay for $120.73 worth of food items at Walmart at Buffalo Ridge Plaza in the villages. They both were arrested on charges of theft and booked at Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $500 bond each. The villa that Bender and Aaron listed as their address appears to be owned by... Bender's mother. And that's all there is to that report. I just don't get with these kids wanting to live at home. Rules here get broke like this all the time. They're never, there's never nobody to call about it. People know what the rules are, but they break them. A speeding driver from Guatemala was arrested near Spring Arbor Village on County Road 466. 
I can't pronounce this name. I'll put it in the video. Ho39 of Fruitland Park was driving a silver SUV at about 9.30 a.m. Monday when he was caught on radar traveling at 61 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone, according to the rush report from the Lady Lake Police Department. During the traffic stop near the entrance of Spring Arbor Village, Ho provided the officer with a Guatemalan identification card. A computer check revealed Ho, who was arrested for driving without a license this past November in Lady Lake, does not have a valid driver's license and never has been issued one in the United States. He was arrested on a charge of driving without a license. He was booked at the Lake County Jail and released after posting a $1,000 bond. He was given a written warning for speeding. A member of the Morris family landed behind bars after he was caught behind a wheel of a Tesla. Hudson Morse Parr, 29, son of Village's Vice President Jennifer Parr and grandson of the late Gary Morse, was driving a gray Tesla Model S four-door passenger vehicle at 1.04 p.m. Tuesday when a traffic stop was initiated on Cleveland Avenue, County Road 466A in Wildwood, according to the rest report. The deputy asked Parr for his driver's license, registration, proof of insurance, but Parr said he did not have his identification with him. He provided a deputy with his name and date of birth for a records check. The deputy found that the Tesla's registration had expired on August 25th and that Parr's license has been suspended on June the 5th. The deputy also found that Parr had two convictions for driving while license suspended in 2021, one in Duval County and the other in St. John's County, according to the rest report. He also has two convictions for driving with an expired registration, both in 2021. He was arrested on misdemeanor charges of driving while license suspended and driving with a registration that has been expired for more than six months. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $1,500 bond. After graduating from the Village's Charter School, Parr went to the University of South Carolina and went on to study finance at Jacksonville University. He has been working for Morgan Stanley. His arrest report listed an address in Tampa. The address is a $3.25 million home located on Hillsborough Bay. Does it say whether he owns it or whether he's renting it? So you can't jump to conclusions. Let's do a couple letters to the editor. I can't believe the ignorance of the board that would require sod over stone. Natives or any other alternative. It is such a great way to conserve water and not have to look at a brown or bare yard. What are people thinking? That's sent in by Lynn Hickson, the villages. Well, I don't really know what it is about some stone in some areas and in some areas can't have stone and other areas can, but I do know that even in areas where you're allowed to have stone, I still think you got to get it AR. If it's not there when you buy the home new, you have to get it ARC approved. That's a big deal. You can't sniff at it. Doesn't make any difference whether you like it or don't like it. Now, to the editor, just a note to clarify something about reporting things as noted in the letter about the villages becoming a laughing stock of the area. We are? Well, I tell you what, I just have one thing to say about that. We're laughing all the way to the bank. Community Watch does not report architectural violations in the villages contrary to what some people think. Residents are to report violations in their own neighborhood or village, not some other village, just because they don't like something about another person's property that they see. The troll problem seems to occur in the newer areas. However, some reports do come from areas that have been around for 20 years or so. That's sent in by Ron Irwin from the village of Palo Ridge. Well, thank you, Ron. Very well stated. Well, I believe that's going to be the news for this week. I just want to say thanks for subscribing. I know you guys get tired of hearing it, but it really helps. It really does. Subscribing. Give us a, a thumbs up, a like, a comment. And if you want to support the channel, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can become a member. It's only 99 cents a month. And in there, the main thing you're going to get is every video that goes in there is commercial free. Or you can become a Patreon member and it starts as little as $2 a month. And you get a lot of things there that you don't get nowhere else. And everything in there is commercial free. Or if you want to go down to the store down below, Buy a hat, buy a coffee cup, buy a t-shirt. That'll help support your channel also. So with that being said, I'll see you Monday for another video. See you Wednesday for Port Sutton and see you next Friday for some more news. Don't leave your kids in the golf cart.